guys, welcome back to my channel. For the past few months, you guys know I've been vlogging a lot about med school and what it's like, and I've been asking you guys what kinds of videos you want to see, and definitely the most requested video is how to study, and I've been wanting to film it um, for a while now, but I just didn't think I knew how to study, and I still don't really know how to study. I'm still learning with every exam, but I've had like four major exams under my belt, and I think I've solidified like a good study technique for myself. Um, so I'm gonna share that with you guys and see if it helps you. So let's get started. If you guys watched the video where I received a bad exam grade, so I was experimenting with two different study techniques because I wasn't sure which one was gonna work for me, um, and that this is this is the pile that I was talking about. So basically what I did is, so I brought you guys around to the side to see. This was the first half where it was printed out lecture slides. So, and this is the other half where I took my own handwritten notes. And basically the point of this was to see which one worked better for me. So let me show you how I did both of those. So the first half was the first half of the block. I have the book, what you're speaking about now. I have my actual slides over if I use puzzle or anything. And then I have my notes. So what I do is I go through and I usually do a color coding. So anything that's in red or pink in this case is usually important and something that he says in the lecture. And then any mnemonics or any helpful tips that come down, I also want to write them here. So here, steps two to five are irreversible. So I want to make sure I write everything down that's important. If there are any helpful charts. So this is a chart from this lecture. Um, you have to pick and choose when it's important to rewrite these things because this takes a lot of time. But for me, it was really important because if I can see potential questions coming from a chart like this. Now, the good thing about watching it over is you can actually watch it in a faster speed. So you can go from this. Oxia, decreased oxygen delivery to the cells to the tissue support. Okay, sometimes when you develop an oxygen population, but most often, tissue results are decreased a little bit. So this is really good because you can get a lot more done in a short amount of time. And for me, I personally have to watch this over probably two or three times for it to stick. So for the second half, I did something a little bit differently. So that's what this is. So I printed these slides exactly how they are. And I just printed them straight from the lecture. And then I went, I didn't do handwritten notes at all. I just went directly into it and did um, my notes onto the PowerPoint. And I thought this was gonna save me a lot of time. Um, and it did. It probably took like a third amount of the time. But when I went back and I did the breakdown of how I did for the first half and the second half, I definitely did better this way. I'm like, I definitely need, need to write it in my own words, in my own handwriting, and when I am in the exam, I can recall like a picture like this and remember what hypertrophy is based on how I drew that. So I have this system going, and I think it's pretty good. A quick review, so you have your lecture slides on this half. You have the actual lecture, the live lecture that was recorded on this half, and I usually play it in two times speed and get through it in half the amount of time. And then you have your notes. So here are the notes for this one. And then you just go in and you take your time and you just wanna make sure that you're, as you're writing it, it's kind of like a passive way of learning. And so now that's how I study for the first half. And like I said, this is a, a process of a lot of repetition. So you basically just wanna go over and over and over and until you understand it and you can explain it back to somebody. So the way I test that is I usually have a whiteboard that I don't have on me right now. Um, it's at school. So I usually take a whiteboard and I go through the sections and I basically teach it back to the class that doesn't exist. So I'm talking to myself. Um, and I know it sounds really, really dumb, but it actually helps a lot. So, so in this case, we're learning about different cellular changes. So like hypertrophy and metaplasia and things like that. So I would basically talk to my class. So like, for example, I'd be like, Hey class, today we're talking about um, metaplasia. And what is metaplasia? So I would teach the class or tell myself the definition. Um, and then I'm going to talk about different types. So is this reversible or irreversible? So I want to make sure that I can write all of this back without looking at my notes or the lecture or anything. So I just want to make sure all the information is actually in my head. Sometimes you think you know what's happening, but you don't actually know. So the only way to test that is if you try to spit back the knowledge without using any outside sources. So I'll go through and I'll teach this class um, what I learned about this topic and then I'll go back to my actual notes. Um, so here's my section about metaplasia, it's really tiny, and make sure that I hit everything on there. And if I didn't hit it at all, then I don't know it. So then I'll go back maybe like an hour later or the next day. So if there are topics that I know I'm not comfortable with, I wanna make sure I repeat those more than anything else. Um, so I usually use my planner, which I don't have. I write everything down in this planner. So this is what exam week looks like. I plan it out usually like the weekend before the exam, and I go through and everything that's down here is what I have to review for that day. So as you go, you check off everything you need to check off and you, I use this um, technique where I'm teaching back to class and if I can successfully teach back to class then I, I feel like I know it. Obviously, you never, you can't predict what's gonna be on the exam so sometimes you don't know it when you think you do and that's totally fine. And so you just do that 
and hopefully you do well. And the whole point of being here is when you're in the clinic and when you have a patient who presents with these complications, you can figure out what's going on with them. So you just want to make sure that you are learning for long term and not for short term. Um, and I know that sounds like this whole thing sounds like a lot and it's, a, it's like, oh my gosh, med school's crazy and it's really hard. It's really just be organized and work a little bit every single day and in the end it's gonna like all come together. And one thing I learned while I'm here is it doesn't matter how smart you are once you're in med school, it just matters how hard you work. Because, you know, I used to just think people are just smarter than, some people are just smarter than others, but no, it's really just hard work. And that's a huge thing that I learned in med school. So I hope this helped you guys. Um, and if you have any other questions, like if I missed anything, uh, or you have you want clarity on anything I said, please feel free to message me and let me know if this video was helpful at all. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.